In this video, we're going to talk about net force and kinematics. So acceleration can always be found if you know the net force and the mass of an object. We also use acceleration in three of our motion equations. They are velocity equals acceleration times time plus the initial velocity. Um, and then uh, and the other is position is equal to half of the acceleration with time squared plus the initial velocity with time plus the initial position. And of course, the ain't got no time equation. V squared equals 2A delta X, which we could write as X minus X naught or just think of it as like one displacement plus the initial velocity squared. So basically, we now are able to combine force problems with motion problems, the link being the acceleration in each of these equations. Let's take a look at some examples. You pull a 15 kilogram box across a rough floor with a constant force of 100 newtons. Friction resists with a force of 40 newtons. If the box started from rest, how far has it traveled after three seconds? Okay, so let me let me draw this before I do a free body diagram. Um, the box starts from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. And it is going to go some distance with an acceleration to the right um, because it's speeding up until eventually it's somewhere over here three seconds later. So we can write t naught is zero, x naught is zero, uh, and then here we would have x equals question mark because that's what we want to find and then that time is three seconds. Okay, well I could use a motion equation to solve for this. Like for example, I could use x equals one half a t squared plus v naught times t plus x naught um, if I knew what the acceleration of the box was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the acceleration of the box by thinking about the net force that's acting on this box. So let me make some room here and draw a free body diagram of the box. There's going to be a weight force down, a normal force up. Uh, this isn't on an elevator or anything, so those two are balanced. They don't contribute to the net force. Uh, and then I have a constant force being applied of 100 newtons. Since it says you're pulling it, you know, like maybe this is you and you're pulling the object. Let's call that a tension. If you wanted to, you could call it an applied force. That would be fine. Uh, but that's 100 newtons. And then friction resists with less force, 40 newtons. Okay, so basically what I need to do is I need to figure out what's the net of all of these forces. Well, the normal force and the weight, they're balanced, so they don't contribute to the net force. But tension and friction, these are unbalanced forces. So I can write that the net force is equal to tension minus friction, because tension is going to the right and friction is going to the left. Now, you might just be able to see it, you know, in your head mathematically. It's pretty simple. 100 minus 40 is 60. That's the net of these two forces. So what do I do with that? Well, I need to figure out what the acceleration is in order to solve this equation. So what I do is I take my acceleration equals net force over mass equation, and I plug in 60 newtons for the net force and divide by 15 kilograms. And now I know that the acceleration is 60 over 15, or 4 meters per second squared. Okay, so with that acceleration, I can now solve how far forward the box has gone. I go to my motion equation, half of 4 meters per second squared times that 3 seconds squared, plus the initial velocity, well, it starts from rest, so the initial velocity is 0, that term goes away. And we said the initial position was zero, so that's gone. So there's nothing else I need to do except solve this problem. Okay, so half of four is two times nine is 18. Right, point five times four times three times three, yeah, 18, 18 meters. So that's how far forward the box has gone. Again, we found the acceleration by looking at a free body diagram and the net force. 
Then we figured out how far the box went using this motion equation. Let's do another problem. You bail hard on an electric scooter. You hit the ground going 12 meters a second, which is about 27 miles per hour. And you skid four meters across concrete before coming to a stop. Ouch. What is the magnitude of the force of friction that acted on you? Okay, so you're on your scooter, right? And then, boom. <sighs> you hit the ground. No! And you hit the ground with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. Okay. Then you are actually slowing down as you slide across the concrete. <laughs> you leave this trail of blood. Okay, that's good. This is a very graphic problem. And when you come to a stop, your final velocity is zero. Now, it tells you that you skid four meters. So what I would do is I would say x naught equals zero. Final x, the final position is four. And now I'm going to think, okay, ultimately I want to find the force of friction that acted on you. And if I'm sliding to the right, then that means as I slide to the right, friction is acting to the left to slow me down, right? Because there has to be an acceleration to the left. Okay. Well, I actually have enough information here to find that acceleration. So let's find that acceleration. You'll notice I don't have time, and that's my clue to use the ain't got no time equation. Okay, awesome. Now I get rid of anything that's zero first, so the final velocity is zero, the initial position is zero, so I get zero equals 2ax plus v naught squared, and I want to solve for the acceleration, so I subtract v naught squared from both sides, and then I divide both sides by 2 and x. So my equation for acceleration negative v naught squared over 2x, which is negative 12 meters per second squared over 2 times 4 meters. Okay, so 12 squared over 8 is 18, and it's a negative 18 meters per second squared. Now, it makes sense that the acceleration is negative, because my initial velocity is to the right, and so the acceleration should be in the opposite direction to slow me down. Okay, cool. So what do we do with that acceleration? Well, let's think about the Fremont diagram of you as you are sliding. There is your weight down, the normal force up supporting you. Those two are balanced and are not a part of the net force. And as you move forward, there is not a force pushing you forward. No, no. Your inertia, right? You are traveling with a speed of 12 meters a second. If you fell on ice, then you would just keep going 12 meters a second until eventually something stops you. Well, the something that stops you is friction. Friction drags back against you with some force that we want to find. Well, this means that friction is the unbalanced force. And so the net force is friction for this problem. And that's good because if I want to know what the net force is, I can also use the product of mass and acceleration to find it. So now I know that the net force acting on the object is going to be, oh, you know what? This is supposed to say U and then U are 60 kilograms. <laughs> Pretend like you didn't see that. U, 60 kilograms. Wow. Okay. So the net force is... 60 kilograms times negative 18 meters per second squared. 60 times negative 18 is negative 1,080 newtons. So that means that friction is also equal to that negative 1,080 newtons, which makes sense because that friction is to the left. Let's do another problem. You drop a 0.5 kilogram, oh good, there's mass, basketball from a height of 10 meters. If there is an average air resistance of one newton while the ball falls, how long does it take to hit the ground? 
Okay, so we haven't really done much with air resistance before, um, and this is a good place to start. So you drop your basketball from a height of 10 meters. Let's just say you're on a building, you know, go classic, um, free fall problem. The initial velocity is zero. Uh, and let's use y instead of x for this one. So your initial height is 10, 10 meters. Your final height when it hits the ground, or right before it hits the ground, is zero, and you want to find how long does it take to hit the ground. So you want to find the time that it takes. Now here's the thing, if this ball was in free fall and we could ignore air resistance, then we would know the acceleration is g, 9.8 meters per second squared, or we could simplify and use 10. But there is air resistance. so we are going to have to find our new acceleration that this object experiences as it falls. Once we've done that, we can use, um, well, any, any, of, any of the equations that we want really to, to figure out, probably this one. Uh, one half a t squared plus the, actually we use y, y equals, you can call it v y not if you want, but we'll say v not, t plus y not. You'll use that equation to solve for t. So let's figure out, how do we find the acceleration? Well, if I draw a free body diagram of the ball, I'm gonna have the weight force acting down and a little bit of air resistance acting up. Now, you might be asking, what do you call air resistance? Well, typically we think of air resistance as a form of friction, and so you can write friction if you want, or some people like to write F air, and that's fair. One Newton. Okay, so, so what's the net? Well, if I think about the net of these two forces, I've got friction acting up, so I make it positive, minus the weight. Well, the force of friction, I'm told, is constantly one newton, um, or the average is one newton, and we'll talk about this in much more detail down the road, because air resistance is very complicated. So one newton of air resistance on average, and then we subtract the weight well, the weight is the mass times the acceleration that you would experience due to gravity if you were freely falling. So um, 0.5 kilograms times 10, which I'll write this up here, 0 0.5 kilograms times 10 meters a second squared, that's 5 newtons. So the net force is negative 4 newtons, which makes sense. Um, because you're still moving down, right? The weight still outbalances the air resistance, and so you would expect a net force to, to be pulling the ball down. It's just less than five. Okay, so how do I find the acceleration from this? Well, the acceleration is the net force over the mass. So negative four newtons divided by 0.5 kilograms, which is eight meters per second squared. Negative eight meters per second squared. Now that's important because I'm going to need to use that negative 8 in my motion equation. So let's do that. I'm going to get rid of all this work right here just so we have some space. Okay. Moving right along. Um, and I'm going to start solving my motion equation problem. So I get rid of anything that's zero. That would be the final height. The final height is zero. And the initial velocity is zero. So zero equals one half a t squared plus uh, y naught. Uh, and then to get the time, I'm going to subtract y naught from both sides. Yes, why not? <laughs> and then I am going to try and get t by itself. So to do that, I multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half. Then I divide by a. and I take the square root. So my equation for t is the square root of negative 2, why not, over a. Does that negative matter? Yeah, because I've got negative 2 times 10 meters, and I divide that by negative 8 meters per second squared, which is what we got. And the square root of 20 over 8 is 1.58 seconds. Okay, great job. Let's do another.
Plankton lifts a chum bucket attached to a rope with a constant force of 20 newtons. Initially, the bucket is at rest on the ground, but after being lifted two meters, the bucket is moving one meter per second. What is the mass of the chum bucket? Okay, so let's let's draw this real quick. Here's Plankton, and he is lifting this chum bucket. Uh, and let's let's start by kind of drawing the the kinematics of everything. We would say they start from a height of zero, and then the bucket gets brought up to a height of two meters. The initial velocity is zero because it's initially at rest. And then the final velocity after that two meters is one meter per second. Okay, great. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to find the mass. Wow, that that's weird, right? Like, I don't know how I'm going to find the mass. Well, okay, I at least know that the mass is inside of the net force equation, right? Sigma F equals mass times acceleration, or net force, mass times acceleration. So maybe if I can find the acceleration, then I can use it in the net force to find the mass. So let's start by trying to find the acceleration with our kinematic quantities. Okay, I notice that I don't have time, which means I should probably use the ain't got no time equation, where I'm using y instead of x, because why not? Um, and yeah, let's get rid of things that are zero. The initial height is zero and the initial velocity is zero. So this becomes v squared equals 2ay. And I want to find the acceleration, so I divide the final velocity by 2 times y. Uh, and the acceleration is that final velocity, or 1 meter per second squared, over 2 times 2 meters. So 1 over 4, or 0.25 meters per second squared. Okay, well, I've got the acceleration now. Um, I guess what I need to know is the net force, right? I've got the acceleration. If I know the acceleration and the net force, then I can find the mass. Okay. So if we're going to draw the free body, di or if we're going to find the net force, we're going to draw a free body diagram. Uh, I know that there is the weight of the chum bucket down, and then the tension, right? It's got a rope. Okay, tension in the rope, which this problem actually tells me has a force of 20 newtons. So I'll write T equals 20 newtons. Um, and then the weight of the chum bucket, oh shoot, it doesn't tell you the weight of the chum bucket. Interesting. Okay, so so I don't know what the weight is. Hmm. This one is kind of a, a tough problem. I've got the acceleration, but how can I find the net force if I don't know the weight? Well, let me show you a really weird and fun trick. I can write an equation for net force. Net force is going to be tension, right? Because that's what's going up, T, so it's positive, minus mg, because that goes down, right? Well, why don't I combine these two equations? Mass times acceleration equals T, tension, minus the weight. Okay, so I just set my two equations for net force equal to each other. Now I can see that, oh, I have two terms with mass in them. So what I can do is add mg to both sides. And now once I've done that, I can factor out m. I'm going to get rid of this question mark real quick. Okay. Now to solve for the mass, I can divide tension by acceleration, due, uh, acceleration plus acceleration due to gravity. So I have all three of those things. 20 newtons divided by 0.25 meters per second squared plus, and we're using 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so 20 divided by 10.25 gives me 1.95 kilograms. Man, kind of tricky, but this, this comes up often um, in 
and more complicated force problems. So I'm glad that we did it. Good job. This video is over.